Hey team, Coach Stickity here. Now, I've been playing and coaching Overwatch for a very long time. I actually started my career aspiring to be a pro player, grinding out the game and jumping around various amateur teams in the early days of Overwatch Esports. Since then, I've transitioned to full-time coaching, worked as an assistant coach in the Overwatch League, represented Canada at the Overwatch World Cup, and now I offer private coaching to players of every level. And one of the most consistent questions I get asked is, what can I do to improve in bronze or plat or grandmaster or top 500 or whatever rank you find yourself in. Now there are a ton of other videos out there giving advice about what heroes to pick, what ultimates to combo, and what duo synergies are OP this season, and while that information can be very useful, I feel it's missing the bigger picture. That's why today I wanted to share with you some coaching advice to help you identify and build your soft overwatch skills. Now, what exactly are these soft skills I'm talking about? I'm going to be defining them as fundamental areas of gameplay that don't relate to specific hero interactions or mechanical ability. That means that these are all things that you can work on independently of what role you play or how cracked out your aim is. I'll be breaking down these skills and prescribing improvement methods based on the most common issues I've seen affecting players at every single rank. So whether you're trying to climb out of bronze, hard stuck in diamond, or even pushing the limits of the game attempting to reach top 500, I promise that there will be valuable information here for you. Also, just because I'm sorting these tips by rank doesn't mean that you won't find useful info all throughout the video. Feel free to skip around to whatever rank you find yourself in, but I strongly recommend watching the entire video to truly understand the different skills I'm presenting here. And finally, I want to mention that while climbing is exciting and seeing that shiny number go up is a great way to feel accomplished, it's definitely not for everyone. At the end of the day, we're talking about a video game here, and games are meant to be fun. There's absolutely nothing wrong with playing at any level of skill, and you should always prioritize your health and enjoyment of the game above anything else. But if you're like me and you get the most enjoyment from pushing your limits, here are my soft skills to improve for every rank in Overwatch. Starting with Bronze, the skill here we're going to be talking about is simply time. Try and keep up, okay? The recipe for growth is time and focused effort. We can't focus our efforts properly if first we can't manage our time. Now this might not sound like a skill, but what this means is that you need to be able to commit enough time to playing the game to grow as a player. In addition to that, your time needs to be used properly. You should be playing with a growth-focused mindset, a stable mental state, and with enough commitment to see improvement. This doesn't mean you need to grind 8 hours a day every single day, but it does mean that if you truly want to climb and improve as a player, you need to be able to commit to it. I would recommend 5-10 to 10 hours a week minimum for skill retention and stable growth, and closer to 10-20 to 20 hours a week for a more dramatic increase in skill. My main piece of advice for players in bronze would simply be to grind the game. Learn as much as you can about the game and yourself to help you develop good fundamentals which we can build upon later. Moving on to silver, the skill here is going to be effort. This is no time for standing around. Now this might seem obvious, but you'll have to put focus and consistent effort into your play in order to see results. What this looks like in practice is setting goals for yourself and measuring your results. Now these goals can range from anything from learning new heroes to playing a certain number of games without tilting and anything in between. But keep in mind a few things. Any goal you set for yourself should follow a few rules. Number one, it should be attainable. Be realistic with your expectations and set goals that are within your reach. For an example, setting a goal for yourself to climb 500 SR within the next week is a bad goal. There's so many things out of your control here that we can't always follow through on. But a good goal might be something like playing a certain number of hours by next week, as long as you can manage your scheduling. Next, make sure that these goals are measurable. Be able to keep tabs on your progress and measure your growth. For an example of a bad goal, something simple like just get better at the game is bad. How do you quantify this? This is so subjective, you're not going to be able to measure this. But a better goal might be something like seeing better specific stats or win rates improve on specific heroes. Being able to see these things in-game from your player card helps you track these things. And finally, make sure that you are specific in your goal setting. You want to improve at specific things one at a time in order to focus your efforts more effectively. A bad example here would be to just simply stop dying so much. 
There's so many things that can lead to your death in Overwatch that this might not be a single thing that you need to improve on and isn't specific enough to see growth. But a better goal in the same area might be something like take slower engagements to have a better idea of the threats around you. This helps you focus on specific areas in game and helps you remember your goals when these situations arise. I think the most important advice I can give here, and maybe for the whole video, would be to evaluate your play as much as you can in order to determine what kinds of goals you should be setting for yourself. The most effective way to do this is to review your play through the replay viewer to see things you may have missed while focusing on playing. But if you find that too boring or time consuming, then try using your downtime while playing. If you're sitting in a queue between games, waiting for the spawn doors to open, or even while waiting to respawn after a death, start asking yourself questions about where your play needs improvement and what you can do to address these issues. If you have absolutely no idea where to start, ask yourself how you could have avoided any of your previous deaths in game. And here's a pro tip for you, 99% of the time, it's due to a lack of awareness. Oh, and by the way, this is exactly what a coach does for players who are having trouble evaluating their own play. If you want to see what that looks like in action, you can check out my Twitch stream where I do live replay reviews, or check out my Metify page where I offer private coaching. Links to both in the description. Moving on to gold, and the soft skill we're building here is purpose. Once the mission starts, no more messing around. So now we're moving out of the realm of simply avoiding mistakes and into the promised land of active decision making. Making an active decision means that you have a reason for whatever it is you're doing. It doesn't always have to be the most educated or well thought out reason, but it needs to be conscious and context driven. Gold players, from what I've seen, are among the most guilty of playing on autopilot or without purpose. When this happens, you find yourself in disadvantageous situations often and without the understanding or the tools to get yourself out of them. To avoid this sounds simple, but is possibly the hardest skill to hone on this list. Start thinking. And I don't just mean thinking like, oh hey, they have a Farah, maybe I should swap to a hitscan, or I should probably get on the payload before they full cap the map, but thinking in terms of working with every single bit of information available to you to come up with the most complete game plan possible. The most important in-game decisions usually revolve around the following areas. Number one, hero choice. Know what you're trying to accomplish with your given hero choice. Are you accounting for the map? Are you playing for synergies with your team? How will your choice change based on what your team or the enemy team picks? Number two, positioning. Are you positioned safely enough based on what threats the enemy is showing? Do you have enough options to develop your position aggressively or give it up defensively when needed? And third, cooldown usage. Are you changing your playstyle based on the availability of your important cooldowns? Are you available to commit your cooldowns offensively or defensively whenever they're needed? On the surface, this might all sound like a lot of overthinking, but this is what it means to play with purpose. And remember, we're talking about skills today. It takes a lot of work to develop your understanding, awareness, and critical thinking to a point where you can make active decisions on the fly. So be patient with your growth. Target these different areas specifically when aiming to improve. Moving the payload, and nothing is going to stop it. Platinum. And the skill we're talking about here is synergy. Together, we can solve any problem. Once we're able to identify our purpose in game and have set goals to better achieve that purpose, the next step is to make the path towards those goals as smooth as possible. And the most consistent way to do this is to identify and play for synergy. Now when I use the word synergy, a lot of you will probably picture things like giving nano boost to a blading genji, or shooting hanzo dragons into a graviton surge, and you wouldn't be wrong, but this is only the surface of what synergy can look like in overwatch. Combos like this are good examples of a larger concept that's tied together by two major things, shared availability and intent. And there are two main ways that these are played for in-game. Firstly, there's mechanical synergy. These are the in-game mechanics that complement each other well so that players can achieve things together that no individual hero could do alone. This is where those ultimate combos come in, but you can also think in terms of more general resources, like, for example, using Azari's bubble to enable an aggressive teammate, or using Baptiste's immortality field to keep a squishy backline up and running for longer than expected. To play for mechanical synergy in your games, all you have to do is find parts of your hero's kit that can be used in tandem with your teammates. There are countless examples of this type of synergy between most of the heroes in game, and you likely already have a short list of heroes you enjoy having on your team for this reason alone. But don't forget what I said at the beginning of this section. Synergy is based on shared availability and intent. 
It's not enough that you have teammates that you can synergize with, they also need to be available to make the same play and have a somewhat similar game plan in mind before you can depend on their resources benefiting you. For example, let's take that Zarya bubble we mentioned. It can be used to synergize with nearly anyone, but it needs to be available, as in it can't be on cooldown and Zarya needs to be in range to see her target, and in addition, the Zarya player has to be looking to use it at the same time as its recipient is playing aggressively. This seems complicated and like there's a lot of moving pieces and steps involved, but I promise it's easier to play for than you might think. To start, we can basically ignore the intent part of the equation and focus solely on availability. The reason we can do this is because unless we have strong communication and trust in our teammates, good luck finding that in your games by the way, intent will rarely sync up the way we want it to. Everyone is playing the game with their own plans and with a limited point of view, so don't expect teammates to always be on the same page as you, or even notice you half the time. But what we can do is wait strictly for availability. The most common problem I see with players in Platinum is they'll see an opportunity for an amazing play only to go for it not realizing they were engaging while half their team was still coming back from the spawn room, or they were dealing with a threat to their backline, or had less than half HP and were backing out of the fight. Playing for synergy often means knowing the difference between when your team is available to play with you and when they aren't. The best piece of advice I can give to work on learning that difference is to look at your teammates the same way you look at your enemies. You likely notice when an enemy is out of position or out of cooldowns or low HP, so start putting that same attention to your own team before you start thinking aggressively and you'll be more likely to start the fight with more of your team involved. Alright, that was a lot, and I could probably end this section here and be fine, but there's another type of synergy that I wanted to cover as well, and that's gameplay synergy. If mechanical synergy was all about understanding the tools your teammates can have to support your goals, then gameplay synergy is about understanding how your teammates' goals can affect how you realize your own plans. The easiest way to break this down is with an example. Let's say our DPS lineup consists of an Ash and a Tracer. Now, neither of these heroes can offer much mechanical synergy to each other, except for maybe adding damage to each other's targets, but understanding the gameplay differences between Tracer and Ash can help both of them find more value through gameplay synergy. Ash likes to hold down long angles and throw dynamites into grouped up opponents, whereas Tracer likes to run around all over the map and try to pick off any squishies that find themselves alone. Knowing this, these two players can synergize their play to find better opportunities together. Maybe, instead of blinking straight into the backline, the Tracer player will wait until the enemy is within Ash's sightlines and play angles that prevent them from approaching Ash's position too easily. Maybe instead of positioning forward to get early damage in, the Ash player will wait to see her allied Tracer taking the attention of some enemies before using her coach gun to get an aggressive high ground, knowing that the enemy will be distracted and less likely to punish her. Another way of putting this would be to think of the enemy's attention as a limited resource. They can't respond to both these separate threats at the same time, at least not easily. So synergizing their play allows both Tracer and Ash to play both safer and find more individual opportunities. Again, see how this concept ties into the idea of availability and intention between these two players and how neither of them would be able to find as much success without the other present. Moving on to Diamond, and here we're going to be talking about positivity. Peace be upon you. So congratulations, you've made it to Diamond. We are now pushing into the higher end of the Overwatch skill rating system. There still might be a ways to go, but making it this far is definitely an accomplishment and it's something that the majority of the player base will simply not achieve, so well done. But I've noticed there's something sorely lacking from Diamond level players, and that's positivity. Now, this isn't meant to be some feel-good bit about how you shouldn't get tilted or be toxic, although you definitely shouldn't do those things, stop doing those things, but it's to highlight the fact that positivity is the first and biggest step to something much greater. Consistency. I've seen some of the most insane plays or cracked mechanics and unbelievable ingenuity from Diamond or lower level players, but unfortunately for those players, skill isn't measured by our highest or our lowest moments. It's measured by our consistency. The best players in the world aren't always making better plays than everyone else, but they are making the best play with every single opportunity that they get. And this concept isn't anything new by the way. Any competitive scene from world class athletes to competitive poker players will understand this. So I'm not going to go much deeper than that, there are plenty of other resources out there that will cover anything you would want to know about building consistency, but I want to talk about some habits that you can start building for Overwatch specifically. The first step, like I mentioned, is positivity, or in other words, shaking off the bad moments. To err is human, and to make simple, stupid mistakes in a game of Overwatch is diamond. I cannot stress enough 
how important this is. You need to be able to walk away from a misplay, a feeding teammate, a disconnect, anything that makes you feel bad about the game, and instead put your focus on what is actually in your control. What comes next? Any number of things will go wrong in your games. Whether it was just unlucky, or you fed your brains out, doesn't actually matter. Don't let it linger in your mind, or it will affect the way you approach the game from that point onwards. So, habit number one is simple. Forget it and move on. Or as we like to say in the Overwatch community, GG go next. Habit number two is considerably harder to recognize, but I would say equally important. And that is to not let winning go to your head. It's not uncommon to find yourself in a one-sided game in your favor. You might not remember them as much as the other type of one-sided games, but I promise you that they do happen. So when you're in that position, the worst thing you can do for your long-term improvement is allow yourself to relax and ignore your fundamentals. You might catch yourself making more aggressive plays than you wouldn't normally do, or swapping to off-roll heroes that don't make sense for the moment, or just generally not paying attention to things going on in-game. Not only will these things potentially throw your games and turn an easy win into a quick loss, but they can make you a less consistent player overall, because you'll lose focus on everything you've been working on up until this point, and stagnate at your existing skill level. If you want to hear me talk more about this concept and see it in action, you can check out this review I did for one of my viewers on stream. Link in the description. Imagine your skill level as a ruler, and the, the high point of the ruler, or one end of the ruler, is the best you've ever played, and the lowest end of the ruler is the worst you've ever played. Uh, your goal isn't to push the higher end higher. Your goal is to shorten the ruler while keeping it towards the higher end. Masters. And the skill we're building here is patience. I will draw them into my web. All right. We've identified how we want to play and what tools our team can give us to make that play as successful as possible. But guess what? The entire enemy team is staring at us, waiting to shut us down and send us back to the spawn room. Even the best plans rarely survive first contact with the enemy. So now, we must learn patience. I've already alluded to patient play when talking about waiting for the availability of teammates, but now we'll turn our attention to the enemy team. Overwatch is a game filled with variables. There's hero choices, changes in positioning, play styles, cooldown usage, effective targeting, etc. It's literally impossible to account for everything that might happen during a fight, even at the highest level of play. Our aim here isn't to be omniscient, but to break down as many barriers as possible and give ourselves the best chance of success by playing patiently. What this looks like in an average game is threat awareness. And the good news for all you Masters players is you likely already know this skill. You know that Hog is a bigger threat when he has his hook available, so you want to play patient until that cooldown is used. You know that Zen is impossible to kill when he's using Transcendence, so you won't try to all in if you think that ultimate is charged. The tricky part of improving this skill is applying patience and threat awareness consistently throughout your games. The obvious stuff is obvious, you need to be able to see the subtle things. Let's give an example here. Let's say both ourselves and an enemy tank are playing Reinhardt, everyone's favorite mirror matchup. You'll probably have a good read on when that enemy Rein has a low shield and you can bully him, or when he has Earth Shatter available and you need to play safer and keep your shield charged. But are you thinking deeper than that? Can you identify the angles that you'll be opening yourself up to if you push farther forward? Are there any other enemies that can punish you for swinging, like an Ana sitting safely out of sight? What about other ultimates? Maybe you just block their shatter, but then both their DPS double down with ultimates when you think you can push them back. Learning patience means being aware of more things that can go wrong, and sometimes we won't be aware of those possibilities until they happen to us. This is fine, and actually it's one of the best ways to grow. My advice here is to learn from your lack of awareness. Any time you get caught off guard by an enemy, don't let it happen again. But if you do get to a point where you just feel completely lost, you weren't sure what to look for, I would highly recommend using the replay viewer to check out those moments from an outsized perspective. Look outside your point of view for things you missed, or take a look at what the enemy saw that led to their own opportunities. This is a simple skill. Like I said, you probably already know a lot of these concepts and are actively applying them in every single game you play, but growth here will be about how deep you can push your awareness and keep patience in mind consistently. No one can hide. Grandmasters, and here we're talking about prediction. I can do this with my eyes closed. Have you ever heard this quote from Mark Twain? The best swordsman in the world doesn't need to fear the second best swordsman in the world. He goes on to say that this is because swordsmen, or in our case Overwatch players, at the highest level perform in a way that is expected of them, while amateurs will flail around aimlessly and be difficult to read. Now that we've reached one of the highest levels of play, 
we can begin to predict our opponents more consistently and use that to our advantage in our games. Having climbed the Grandmaster, you have almost certainly put a considerable amount of time into the game and developed all the skills we've talked about so far to a strong degree. While there is certainly still growth to be found by sharpening those same skills to their absolute limit, we can also start turning our attention to a simple fact. We are playing against other people, and people are creatures of habit. This will play out differently every time you queue up based on the individual players in your games, but the steps to improving the skill remain the same. First, use your game knowledge to predict how the game should be played. Start by asking, what heroes are on the enemy team? How are they going to work together to find value? You can push this further by predicting specific contexts throughout a teamfight. How will they play on this section of the map? How will they use their ultimates? How will they act differently after members on either side start to revisit the spawn room? The more experience and game knowledge you build, the more situations you'll be able to predict accurately and the more advantages you'll be able to create. Next is being able to identify patterns. You will typically look for the simple things first, like noticing where an enemy flanker likes to retake a point and being ready to pressure them, or how an enemy is reacting to your cooldown usage and being able to bait that reaction to punish them. Beyond that, you can look how the enemy team is synergizing, who the enemy Zarya likes to bubble, how hard they commit to a dive together, how their supports are peeling for each other, etc. Every single interaction the enemy shows you is data that you can collect to get a step up in the fight. And finally, once we're improving our prediction of the enemy, we also want to avoid being predictable ourselves. Like we mentioned in the previous sections of the video, there are rules we have to follow about when our team is able to help our game plan, or when the enemy team is able to shut it down. Being unpredictable means knowing when you can go ahead and break those rules. Sometimes it makes sense to go for the solo re-engage, even when your team is nowhere to be found. Sometimes it'll be beneficial to hit an aggressive flank as an otherwise slow-moving and anchored hero. Essentially what you're aiming to do is outplay the enemy's prediction of your own play. The fighting game community actually has its own terminology for this concept that I think applies perfectly. Yomi. Which basically means being able to read the mind of your opponent. As an example, let's once again imagine a Reinhardt mirror matchup. Both Reins have Earth Shatter and are looking to outplay the other in order to win a fight for their team. Rhin number one gets nanoed by his Ana and starts pushing aggressively. Rhine number 2 predicts this movement since he knows the enemy wants to get value out of their nano and uses his shatter to counter the play. But what if Rhine number 1 predicts that shatter and he baits it out by swinging with the intention of quickly putting their shield back up? What if Rhine number 2 predicts the bait and never commits the shatter in the first place and simply waits out the nano? You could theoretically go back and forth here forever down these layers of Yomi, but it's important to remember that at this point this is a pretty unrealistic hypothetical. And since Overwatch is not a 1v1 game, and there's an insane amount of information to process at any given moment, I wouldn't recommend trying to predict anything beyond the enemy's first reaction. Top 500. Going above and beyond. Any last words? Now would be the time to say them. So let's be honest. If you're a top 500 level player and you're watching this video, there's no general information that I can give you to help you grow. You've already proven to be among the most talented and knowledgeable players who have ever touched the game. Any improvement at this level of play will require strict assessment of your individual skills as a player. There is definitely no one-size-fits-all here. But I thought it would be good to highlight what sets Top 500 apart from the rest of the player base. The answer is somewhat lackluster, but it's simply the ability to perform to a degree beyond the already high skill level around them. This applies to not just one, but every single area we've talked about today. So let's recap those. Time. Many of the players at the top of the leaderboard are professional level players who compete for prize money and get paid salaries to play the game. They can obviously commit amounts of time that are simply unrealistic to the majority of the player base. Effort. Reaching and maintaining this rank requires efforts beyond the level of enthusiasm. These players likely have a deep passion for competitive gaming that drives their commitment to the craft so they can exercise effort consistently for hours on end. Purpose. The level of understanding these players are able to showcase is second to none. Every action and every in-game decision comes second nature to them and is driven by exceptional levels of experience. Synergy. By watching these players play, it becomes clear that they are thinking on a deeper level than most. Even the most minute detail will affect their choices and they will always know what they need to play for. Positivity. Unfazed by losses and humble in victory, playing consistently at this level cannot be in question if you want to maintain rating. Patience. These players will never force an unnecessary fight, and rarely be unaware of an enemy threat. 
Beyond that, they will be the first to execute as soon as the right conditions are met. And finally, Prediction. Not only will predictable play certainly get you punished at this rank, but these players will catch you off guard with their playmaking and capitalize on imperfect information at every opportunity. And that wraps up my soft skills to improve at every rank. If you've watched all the way through, I commend you for your dedication and I thank you for your time. I know that there's a lot to digest here, but I promise that if you're able to turn even a few of these talking points into action, you'll start to improve as a player. But if you're looking for more individually tailored feedback, you can book me for private coaching on Medify, or you can check out my Twitch stream where I do live replay analysis. Anyway, that's all for me today, team. Thank you again for watching, and I wish you all luck on your road to improvement.